Hi, I'm Tim Marshall. Welcome to the R&B Showcase. From Broadway to the Temptations, it's a conversation with Jawan Jackson. We have special guest co-host in the studio joining us today. We have music historian Mr. Kevin White in the studio. What's happening, Kevin? Hello, Tim. Good to have you back with us here today. Absolutely. And we've got a recording artist and also radio host, Mr. Hey. Kyle Mack. What's hey, up, Kyle? How you What's doing, going, man? man? Always good to have you joining us here in the studio. Today we had a great show, our previous show with the Delphonics. I'm looking forward to another great show today with this gentleman. Now, he is a singer, he is an actor, a recording artist, and he is the current bass singer for The Temptations. Plus, he was in, he appeared in the Broadway musical Ain't Too Proud, The Life and Times of The Temptations. And we're very honored to welcome to the show, Jawan Jackson, let's give Jawan a nice round of applause and welcome him to the R and B showcase. Yeah, good to What's have you with us, brother. What's How up? you doing, man? It's so good to see you, man. How are things going? Being so great, man. You know, about to start the a busy year, a good year. I'm grateful. And you got you got all that bass, brother. Why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got this bass voice? You know, when I met uh, Purvis Jackson of the Spinners, and I said to Purvis, "Can you take some of that bass out your voice when you talk to me?" But tell uh, us about it, brother. Tell us about it. Is everybody all the good bass singers named Jackson? By the way, I'm just curious. I, listen, I don't know, but <laughs> I actually do not know where it comes from. I, 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 I lie. My grandfather. It comes from my grandfather. As a young boy, like I used to always imitate him. You know, because he's just a He's like, my grandfather's like six, four, just big in stature. And so I've always looked up to him and I, one day I was just playing and I was like, you know, he, he's very Southern and he talks like this and he, you know, he's from South Carolina and, you know, so he's mm-hmm. serious. I always, I always imitate him. And then at 12 years old, it's stuck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's okay. This is where we are, you know, cause before I was trying to sing like tenor, I was like Barry, t- you know, mm-hmm. Barry tenors. Mm-hmm. And, right. um, yeah, the ministry said no. And so I had to <laughs> quickly learn, mm-hmm. you know, how to sing low. And it was actually my mentor um, from church who was like, you got all this low. Nobody's doing this. Nobody has this. This is very unique. It's very special. It'll help you stand out and it'll put you forth and it'll, you know, uh, give you a career. And so I was like, okay, well, let's try. And if I had not listened to him, I probably wouldn't be where I am today. Mm. <laughs> well, I have a question. So you said your voice changed at 12 years old. Uh huh. Have you ever like tried to call out of school as your own parents? <laughs> I, you know what? I, the only time I did it was my senior year of high school, right? Really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> but let me tell you something. Because I was so cool with the um assistant who the lady who ran um the call out center yeah. she automatically knew my voice when i called in <laughs> <laughs> she said no bring your butt to school you want <laughs> dude <laughs> so i only tried to do it one time okay and got <laughs> all right well well you were you were an actor uh you spent a lot of time on broadway did the acting and and singing did it start in school like did you start acting on stage in elementary high school something like that I did. Singing always uh, has always been a part of my life. I'm, you know, I grew up in church. I'm a PK. Um, my grandfather was a pastor. Mm-hmm. And so I was always surrounded by music. Uh, so for me, it was just something normal. You know, I didn't look at it as a career. I never considered it as a career because I was always singing. Mm-hmm. Um, acting, I actually got into it in like the seventh, eighth grade. Okay. And my first show was Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. <laughs> Um, okay. And from there, that was like, you know, I was like part of the kids ensemble to the high schoolers. Um, and then that kind of like started my love for theater and, and acting. Wow. OK. And then that that really just paved the way for you. Uh, when did you start Broadway? I didn't start Broadway until after I graduated college. So 2000, my Broadway journey began 2012, 2013. Mm-hmm. Um, I was in college and I was a biochemistry biology major because I what? Wow. Yeah. You're going to be a scientist. Wow. Oh, absolutely. Oh, wow. I, wanted to, I wanted to train like aquatic animals, whales, sharks, dolphins. I wanted to do, I want to be in the water. I'm a water baby. So I thought that's what my <laughs> career path was, you know? Oh man, man. I thought, I think you lost your market. No, I'm kidding. No, you're, you're, you're in the right place. You're in the right place now. You are discovered. But then it was once I like started, you know, this is why I tell people, especially young kids who are, and young performers or anybody in general, like trying to go after a career, intern, internships mm-hmm. are very right. important yes. because it lets Absolutely. you know 
if you're really truly meant for this mm. for that particular job and it allows you to kind of switch gears instead of going to a four-year university getting your degree and now you're like i don't even want to do what i'm you know here for or what i went to school and spent all this money for it so i think internships was important and that was actually for me um what changed my career path and trajectory because I started working in this field and I was like, yeah, no, it's not for me. <laughs> right. <laughs> <At all. laughs> right. 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 Juwan, so where, where, are you, where are you originally from, Juwan? I'm from Detroit, Michigan. Okay. Born You're hey. from Motown. Yes, so I was going to ask you how you prepared yourself for the role of Melvin Franklin in this, in uh, the Broadway musical. So, but you got that bass voice to start, but how did you get, prepare yourself for that role? You know, it's so interesting. So I, my first Broadway show was Motown, the musical. Okay. Uh, which got me to New York. And I ended up honestly getting that audition and like getting that show, not knowing it was a Broadway show at all. Mm -hmm. I just auditioned because I thought it was just another Detroit show. At the time I was doing, and I always tell the story, I was doing this show called The Wiz of Motown. Okay. Um, the Wiz of Motown? Mm. The Wiz of Motown, where they basically had Aretha Franklin playing Dor Dorothy. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> it was, it was, it was, a, it was a, a lot of things going on that was just. Wait, wait, was any, any kind of correlation to the actual The Wiz or? Yes. It was, okay. Yes. Okay. Right. So my character was basically, uh, I played the bus driver um, that drove Aretha through <laughs> to Oz. That was Pittsville, you know. Okay, okay. Was, oh, I like that. So, so it, was, it was a lot going Creative. on in that story. Creative, yeah. Uh, Reimagine. And so mm -hmm. I was doing, I was like doing that show at the time. And All then right. I, I found the audition for Motown the Musical in the classifieds in the newspapers, go mm -hmm. figure. Okay. Like I never read and read the newspaper, but on this particular day, I decided like, I'm bored. Let me just. <laughs> <laughs> is, and, that, uh, is that how auditions are usually promoted in like print? Or like how how is it, is that how it well, typically back happens? In the day, I don't know how, where where it's not because I have not picked up a physical newspaper mm -hmm. and I don't know how long. Okay. But, uh, back then That's, it was yeah. so all any jobs that you're looking for any uh, open calls you can find them on the newspaper in the newspapers in the classified section like mm -hmm. the help wanted mm -hmm. and and or you can find them on. Yeah, backstage was it? Didn't they have back, a backstage, backstage? That was a, a and then it was another record. website like a casting website that listed all the casting mm -hmm. calls in the city in your surrounding area. So I will always faithfully, before I went to work, I would spend, you know, quality time searching for auditions that were coming up. Okay. And that was one of them, Motown the Musical. So I sent my information in and I auditioned at Marvin Winans Academy, um, who's a gospel singer in Detroit from the Winans. Mm -hmm. you know, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, went there, audition, open call, then got a call back, sent that in, Got a call back. My third audition was at the Motown Museum, Studio A, mm -hmm. where I auditioned, still not knowing it, that it was going to be this big thing. And then my third and last final call was New York. Um, wait, wait, when, hold, pause. You said you auditioned in Studio A at, at Motown? I at did. Motown Museum? I did. So what was that? Was that your first time in the building? That was my very first time in the building. And as a Detroiter, yeah. right. Motown the Museum was just like, basically like, you know, just a, another house, another building, because mm -hmm. I drove past it going to work every day. So for me, I grew up with it. I never, ever stepped foot in it. I knew it was mm -hmm. there. It just never was a thing for me. Mm -hmm. So my very first time being in there, experiencing it was auditioning for Motown the Musical. That's mm -hmm. and, and, and it's Incredible. and the link between the two things between mm -hmm. Motown, the musical and Studio A of Motown it was I'm sure that was by design. They were auditioning people there on purpose because of yes. the musical. Yes. Wow. That's Absolutely. gotta be a, an incredible experience. Because they were, they were, I basically call it like the American Idol of, of Broadway because they were searching the country for, at the time I didn't know, like a base. And so, you know, I just was like, whatever, bored, because I was like, I want to do something. I want to be, you know, I'm now trying to transition to entertainment and the world of theater and acting. And because mm -hmm. before that, I did um, <sighs> Sparkle. Okay. Uh, when you okay. Last movie. So that was kind of like where my itch for wanted mm -hmm. to professionally do it and seek it out as a career. Mm -hmm. I was sparked through that uh, experience. Mm -hmm. So my last and final fall, uh, call was they flew me to New York. I'm still not known as a Broadway show mm -hmm. at, after all of this. And then that Friday, it was I auditioned 12, 12, 12. And then 12, 13, 12, I booked it. <laughs> wow. wow. So the next day. Congratulations. Uh, and how... How did they keep it a secret from you that it was a Broadway? How did it, they kept it under wraps that you had? What did you think it was? Well, here's the thing. They never kept it under wraps. They just, 
the ignorance of me thinking okay. it was right. Motown, Detroit Associated, I never put that it was a Broadway show. Okay. Mm-hmm. So once I actually booked it, they were like, okay, well, you know, um, the rehearsals start in January. You have to move to New York. I'm like, why am I moving to New York for a, a great show? <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, for what? Mm-hmm. And it's like, no, it's a Broadway show. And I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> I didn't read. <laughs> I didn't read. And I was like, okay. wait, I just, I just booked a Broadway show? Like, mm. it was all the emotions, all the things. And then once they told me my salary I was making at the time, which was the most money I had, was making that thing, you know, <laughs> coming straight from college, you know, trying to pay tuition, all the things. Needless to wow. say, I woke everybody in the house up and it was a celebration. And needless to say, you did not miss biology at all at that point. Mm. I no. no, I did not. How long did you spend in the Motown musical show? How many years? I was open to close. So we opened in 2013 of that year and then we closed 2015 in January 14th, 2015. So two years. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then how, how long was the interim between Motown the Musical and Ain't Too Proud? Three years. Okay. okay. The show, yeah. I actually had seen the opening night in Berkeley and you were not a, a cast member then. They had somebody else. Uh, right. When did you, did you uh, audition for? Did you get a call? How did, how did that process well, work? So, I, you know, the, the way these were, Ain't Too Proud was hush, 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 hush when it first was started. Like, mm-hmm. right. we, I heard about it years ago when we were doing Motown the Musical. They was like, they're doing a Temptations musical, so y'all get ready. That was like 2013. Cut to 2016, they were doing, they did a workshop reading of it. Right. And I was trying to get in during those, uh, that, that process, because my friend, she was playing Diana Ross at the time, All right. was like, hey, you got this bass here um, that's playing Melvin, and it's not Jawan Jackson and you need Jawan Jackson. <laughs> and so, you know, I, but I still couldn't get an audition mm-hmm. because I had no agent at the time. I had no, like no way in. Okay. And, um, once they went to Berkeley, I was like, it was basically too late for me because the workshop, you know, version of it, they took those people. Okay. Right. So I didn't, it was, it was, uh, my castmates Ephraim, Jeremy and Derek, who essentially was talking in the producer's ears, like, Hey, you need to see this man. Like you need to mm-hmm. see him. If you, we, we looking for a base, we're looking for this, per- like you need to see him. And then I was also friends with the guy who played the role prior to me. Okay. Uh, so when he got word that he wasn't moving forward, he sent me a, a message. was like, Hey friend, I'm not moving forward, but this is your role. Mm, and wow. you, whatever I need to do to help you get in the room, I got your back. And so that was how I ended up getting the, the appointment was through you know, my friends mm-hmm. it was like, you, we need to see him. This is who we need. We don't need to look anywhere else. Mm-hmm. So I had one audition, one call back, and then I finally booked it. Wow. It's, it's nice to hear that there was not any animosity mm-hmm. between the person who was leaving right. and you who was coming into that role. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because you know, we know the name of the game. Like mm-hmm. sometimes like mm-hmm. we do a role and we're like, it's, it just isn't working. And, mm-hmm. and, and you know, if this is not for me, this is not my vehicle, okay. but you know, I know somebody else that's perfect for it. And that's just how we do. Um, and, you know, my community and my friends and my core group of friends, like, that's how we are. We're like, listen, I got this audition. They sent me for the breakdown. I'm completely the wrong person for it. Mm-hmm. Have your people send you in for it, wow. you know? And that's just, you know, we kind of stretch each other back in that way because it's only a few of us in this industry in like that Broadway circle. And so, um, support is everything. Mm-hmm. That's why it's important to make those connections and, and to network. In the, in oh, the industry, how do you compare and contrast playing the same character you playing Melvin Franklin in Motown the musical and then playing him in Ain't Too Proud the musical? How was it different? Was a different adjustment to play than that? It was is it was uh, it was a deeper adjustment mm-hmm. uh, because in Motown I just got to play like a like a, a version of the Temptations, him being a Temptation, nothing else, like just singing wise. In Ain't Too Proud, we're going personal life right. history, like. Um, connection wise with the other group me- uh, members in perspective right. to the group and to the outside world. And so it was just, it was a deeper uh, bit of digging that I had to kind of find and knowing having my Motown connections gave me the connections and the insight I needed to figure out who he was as a person, as uh, a lover, as a, 
just a, a father right. as a, a group member. And I got to get that those insights through the people that I connected with through my, my Motown experience. Right. I, I, I can imagine that when you're playing Melvin in the Temptations in Motown, the musical, it's not not ancillary, but more of a of a support to the overall Motown story where in Ain't Too Proud, you are playing the person, his personality, his backstory. Right. Mm-hmm. And because in Motown, I was an ensemble member and I was playing multiple characters. Melvin was one of my characters of mm-hmm. you know, a bunch. And in this Ain't Too Proud, it's just Melvin. I get to leave, live, eat and breathe Melvin. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Were you a Motown fan before you started doing these Motown uh, musicals and plays? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Growing up in Detroit, you had to be, right? Growing up in Detroit, my grandmother, she always used to joke when I was younger. She was like, baby, if you can sing like Marvin Gaye, you're going to make it. (laughs) (laughs) And I was like, "Uh, sorry, Granny. (laughs) (laughs) Now, was the Temptations your favorite group? They were. They were. Like, Mm -hmm. Temptations was a household staple. Christmas, holidays, barbecues, parties. Like, you know, that Phoenix Rising album, I always tell Mm -hmm. the the guys when I'm in the room, Mm -hmm. I'm like, that is the album I actually grew up on, Mm -hmm. you know? And so, like, even when we're in the dressing room now and they're playing, you know, they're doing the shuffle and they're playing, and I just, the the last, probably like two weeks ago, I just started crying. It hit me, took (laughs) over, and I'm like, Mm -hmm. I I was like, Otis, like, this is my childhood. And this is what kind of like, gave me inspiration as an mm-hmm. artist, as a like trying to be an entertainer, like listening to y'all. And I can't believe like I'm actually now singing with y'all mm-hmm. and Terry Weeks, who is my favorite. Right, right. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I cannot believe it. They just laughed at me. They just laughed it off. Like, oh man, now you're part of the group now. Like, <laughs> no, no, no. Y'all don't understand. So yeah. it's just, uh, it's, it's a full circle moment for me. Mm-hmm. Right. Through. The Temptations have a very inter- interesting dynamic right now. You have two actors, uh, one Broadway actor and one actor was when the things with Tyler Perry in yeah. the same group. I think it's unprecedented. Never, I don't yeah. think it's been done before, you know? No, I've not, not I've seen. Yeah, it's very interesting. Mm-hmm. Kevin, you have uh, a question? Yeah, I have a question mm-hmm. for uh, Juwan. Um, I've had the opportunity over the years to talk to some Temptations. Uh-huh. And one of the funny things is always when they tell me about when they got the call. Uh-huh. Now, you already had a relationship with Otis. So I'm wondering, what was it like for you to get the call to join the group? You know, it's a little different, I guess, when you don't have that relationship beforehand. What was it like for you? Yeah, okay, so it's I got two different calls, mind you. Okay, like, okay. Let me start there. Okay. <laughs> the first call I got was right before Temptation 60. Okay. The album recording. Right. And that was, you know, in the midst of the pandemic and uh, O called me and was like, hey, Jawan, what are you doing? I said, at home like everybody else, what's up? <laughs> you know? And he was like, I may need you to record this album because there's some things that's happening that may not pan out. Could you possibly fly to LA? And I'm like, absolutely. When you need me there? <laughs> you know? So he was like, okay, stand by, I'll let you know. So a couple of days go by, he calls me back. He's like, okay, everything's settled. Like, you know, we don't need you. So I'm like, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Cut to my show ending. Now I'm just like, you know, gigging and working. This is about like May, I want to say, of 2022, last year. Right. I'm at the gym. I just finished working out. And Derek Porter, the tour mm-hmm. manager, our right. tour we manager, know, mm-hmm. he we actually know. called me. He was like, yo, what's up? Haven't heard from you. Just wanted to catch up. You know, it's small talk, small talk, small talk. And then he goes, okay, so what do you feel like? How do you feel about coming on the road with us? I said, as what? Doing what? <laughs> what am I doing? Am I doing the laundry? Am I carrying the bags? Yeah, what, like, what do you want me to do? <laughs> you got to be specific, you know? Yeah. As, mm-hmm. as what? He said, as a temptation. I said, I know you, you're lying. <laughs> I said, you're lying. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Slow walk me, take me back. <laughs> you're asking me to join the group. So he said, yes, if you'll have me. He said, you know, I was talking to Shelly. We lost a guy. And as we were talking, we were trying to figure out how we can make a smooth transition because Otis would have to get to know somebody we're in the middle of a tour, you know? And then we were just like, Juwan, he knows Otis. He has a relationship. He can do it. Otis knows he can do it. Like, this is a perfect fit. In a perfect transition, right. and you know the music, so it wouldn't take any, you know, time to to you know acclimate you. And so I was like, okay, well, send me the terms and agreements and, and the schedule, so I can see what you know what it's looking like. <laughs> right. And when he sent that, sent that schedule, y'all, like, 
it lined up perfectly with everything else I had going on. Awesome. So nice. nothing was disturbed. Mm-hmm. Right. I didn't have to any gigs that I had during the time or, you know, that I had already made prior commitments to, they were all around when I would be off. That's, That's great. Cool. Nice. It lined up so perfectly. Mm-hmm. I was like, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, wow. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm sorry, did you, um, did you uh, ever meet your predecessor? You ever meet Willie Green before? Absolutely. Yeah. I call him Uncle Willie. That's my aunt. Yeah. Well, see, I, I, uh, I, I, I talked to Willie you know, from time to time. And uh, when I, when I had first heard the news and I was talking to him about it, he was in so much support of mm-hmm. you. He could not have been yeah. happier Very for you. Very supportive. Yes. He called himself yeah. a Jawan mm-hmm. Jackson fan. Mm-hmm. Yes, he did. Yeah. Yeah. I love him so much. Like yeah. he was, you know, because they're not so, they're not so many bass singers out there. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. To hear one and to be in the presence of one, I, I always run to. And so he and I had a connection, mm-hmm. you know, that were cool. We stayed in contact. Like he would give me advice, dating advice, relationship advice. When I'd be like, you know, my, my, my girlfriend is getting on my nerves right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And so we, we had a seven relationship prior. So once it happened, he called and was like, they got the perfect man for the job mm-hmm. and I love you and I'm supporting you. And I know you're going to do this and anything mm-hmm. that you need from me, like call me, let me know. I got your back. And so, you know, that, and also that's important to me. Relationships and building yes. bridges is very important to me because I don't want to do anything that compromises my integrity, my moral, right, moral right. confidence on anything. And so I was just very hell bent on making sure that that relationship was kept intact. Right. So and yes. That, and that's, and that's great on you because especially in this group, that's not always the case. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. the, the people don't usually have, uh, you know, you don't hear a lot of great relationships for people who are leaving, who are coming in. So the fact mm-hmm. that you two made that effort mm-hmm. makes the story so much sweeter. So good on the both of you. Although there have been, the temptations are very supportive. Some, t- m- many members are supportive of the others. Richard Street was very supportive of Theo. Right. Place right. him. So you do have members that are supportive of the other I'm members. I'm saying it doesn't always happen. Right. But yeah, right. but, it, it, you know, it does happen. So you know, good on you guys. When you're a fan of the group, you know, you like all the members. And that's when we, we definitely, yeah. we know you're that's definitely important. a great asset to this group and uh, being part of it. But I want to ask you about Ain't Too Proud is a very high energy musical with a lot of intricate choreography. What was the preparation and rehearsal process for for that type of choreography? It was a six week process before I even met the guys and met the group. Mm-hmm. So they had me a six week intensive training just to learn the music and the choreography. The music was easy. Um, but although for the Berkeley run, everything was like octaves up. Mm-hmm. And so I came in, I was like, I can actually do that. Let me do the original note. Like, let's go back to what it was written. Mm-hmm. And so it was just changing the music around to mm-hmm. make it authentic and true to the story. Okay. Um, but then it was that those dancing moves because I'm not a dancer. Okay. I can club dance. I always tell people I can club uh-huh. dance. I can, you know, stand rhythm, but <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> choreography and, and, and like musical theater is it's a it's a beast. It's Sergio Trujillo's mm-hmm. you know choreography with our associate choreographer uh, Edgar Godino. Mm-hmm. And they you guys, you guys won a Tony for yes. your choreography too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we won a Tony. Lord, yes, we, we did. Mm-hmm. But I also when we got nominated for that when the Tonys came out, I said I. You know, I would love to have been nominated. I said, but I would be pissed if we did not get nominated for best choreography. I said, mm-hmm. first of all, I'm dancing too damn hard. We <laughs> 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 better get nominated. We right, better right. win. That's right. We better That's win. Right. And That's you know, right. thankfully we did. So mm-hmm. I wouldn't have to pull a Kanye West. You know, mm-hmm. you'll never know what happened if we right. win. Right. You know? <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, Kevin. Kevin. What's the biggest difference between the Broadway choreography mm-hmm. and the choreography you're doing now? Mm-hmm. And do you ever slip up and go between the two? <laughs> Excellent question. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Actually, the, I do slip up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you what. I'm ain't too proud. That's the only uh-huh. um, mm-hmm. number that I slip up on mm-hmm. because it was so similar. You know, you said they were rock step. And, right, right. And so right. I'm like, no, 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 no. We, Go back to the temptation, like you're an actual temptation now. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes, it's very interesting. But the choreography from from the temptations and ain't too proud is night and day. Mm, it's, it's very uh, different. Yes, temptations yes. is I can lay in the cut. It's just smooth, you right. know. Right. With ain't too proud, he's like high empty, high empty. Right, right, right. That's what I'm saying. Spin. You have to, you have to do the Broadway version of it. Right, right. I always yeah. said the temps choreography was more like a march. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. more like a march. Ain't too proud <laughs> is. Mm. Basically, like a uh, every the, all the tempos are up, right? Right. So they spit those tempos up in Ain't Too Proud, so it can keep going with with the group. It's just you know we're at a 
I feel like 1632. Like, <laughs> it's a lot easier, you know, right. I don't sweat as much. Mm-hmm. Right. How is it like now that now that you're a member of the group? Um, what is the uh, you feel like good dynamic with everybody? I mean, the elephant in the room is that you're the youngest member of the group. You are 35. Yes. Yeah. So um, is that doesn't I can't imagine, though, that that would be much of an issue for you as far as like how you interact with everybody. There's like the the culture difference, like the age difference. It shouldn't be that much of a big deal. It's, it's no difference at all, only because I'm an old soul to heart. Mm-hmm. So all of my friends are all older. Mm-hmm. I got, you know, like that's just been my vibe. I, I've mm-hmm. been I've been I've been trying to be grown before I was grown. Right. So you remind us of somebody in the room. They're, they're making fun. Of, they're making fun of me because I'm the same way. I, my my Kevin's my best friend, and he's like he's 82. So I'm say. I am, <laughs> and I just uh, I forget. Can't. You forget how I, yeah. they forget how old I am. They're like, oh, you've been here before. And I'm like, they're like, oh, nephew, that's right. You're 35. Mm-hmm. Is that's when like when we go on interviews or mm-hmm. doing something because we had this interview. I'm not gonna name the name, mm-hmm. but he just kept like just kept poking the bear because I was the youngest and like new and he never, he didn't do his work on who I was or what I had brought right, right, to right. prior to that. So it was a very, and then I had to kind of like, after he, it was said, then I broke down. I was like, I got two kids. <laughs> <laughs> You know, babies here. Like, I come with a Grammy nomination. I come with this. I come with that. Like, mm-hmm. you didn't do your research, sir. Mm-hmm. But I, you know, it's okay. <laughs> it's <laughs> but, okay. But being that youth, you're also able to connect with students, though, and young people. I mean, I see you yeah. do a lot of things with the young people in the schools, the singing in the schools with the young people, and we're working with them. So that's that's a good yeah, that's connection one of my to make. You know, platforms is mm-hmm. keeping uh, music and education mm-hmm. because that's a dying art, mm-hmm. and that's a, usually the uh, first funding to go. And so I'm very keen on um, making sure that music stays in theater and you know musical theater and just mm-hmm. you know arts you know uh, arts program stays into fine arts program stays into uh, the school system mm-hmm. because that gave me outlets to discover what i wanted to do and it kept me out of trouble and kept me engaged mm-hmm. you know and when you take out those extracurricular activities like that to hone musical you know theater or music or band or choir mm-hmm. um you know it you don't get to you get up you don't get fully realized kids you know mm-hmm. you need well-rounded mm-hmm. um kids and so i'm also a board member of rosie's theater kids okay. um the organization and so yeah that's one of my platforms now man. where is that based out of rosie's theater is that new york it's a new york based uh Fantastic. Organization. Yeah. Yeah. okay well i work in education too so give some advice to the kids about this business and just in life in general well uh, what i always say is you know learn your craft mm-hmm. learn everything about it and never stop learning you you know i'm i've been in it you know, coming up on 15 years now and mm-hmm. I'm still learning. There are still things that I do not know. And I'm like, Oh, help me, mm-hmm. you know, make sure you're always training make sure you're always, you know, practicing and make sure you're always gleaming from somebody who has done it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's a great example of it. And let, don't let your nose stop you. Let your nose motivate you and encourage you. Mm-hmm. One of the things I always like um, about watching, and I've seen you uh, with attempts uh, several times now. You haven't been you haven't been done with too long, but I've seen. I think I've seen you quite a, quite enough. Um, you are very much yourself. Mm-hmm. You bring your own voice. Absolutely. You bring your own uh, your own dynamic. Energy. Your own yes. element. Mm-hmm. Um, is that it? Because there's a been. Uh, I don't know if it's been so much of a conscious decision in the past where bass singers might sing something more traditionally, but you sing things very much like you, which I appreciate. Mm-hmm. Um, and is that a conscious decision? Was that a discussion or was it, you know, did you sneak it in there? What happened with that? No, I, you know, I actually asked first before uh, I joined the group because I, I, we were in rehearsal. Um, my first rehearsal was in Seattle, Washington, and we were in there like just singing over the stuff. And I was asking, you know, our music director, TC and Otis at the time while we were in there. I said, hey, I said, I know Melvin you know, you were trying to stick close to the album cuts because mm. it's, it's very signature, it's memorable. I said, however, you know, the live version that y'all are doing is like night and day. So mm-hmm. can I put my spin on it? What are, what are my limitations around? And they were like, go for what you know. <laughs> <laughs> Say less, mm-hmm. you know, which is fun too, because now, you know, I'm bringing my, I get to bring my own self mm-hmm. and my own artistry yeah. to right, right to the group mm-hmm. you know, right whereas before i'm playing somebody else mm-hmm. i'm trying to sing note for note right what was written and now i get to just expressively mm-hmm. myself that's how you help establish your own identity with the group and put your own on it. i think it's a great thing you're doing a great job with them 
um, so far. We appreciate uh, coming out to see you, Kyle. Um, and I would like to, uh, it's, it seems very clear to a lot of us that the group uh, with the collection of voices that, that they currently have now, including you and Tony Grant and, you know, Terry Weeks, um, that the that the sound of the group is probably the most youthful that it has been in a while. Um, and the I know that the Temptation 60 album, when I was talking to Otis before, he said that was going to be the last one. We're mm-hmm. going to we're going to call it the, the anniversary. Do you, are you able to say or have you heard or you feel anything that maybe the Temptations will go back into the studio in the near future with this new sound? New album. I mean, we'll never say never. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. I I'm, hope not, so. I'm not trying to scoop you or make you say anything that you're not supposed mm-hmm. to. But, you know, it's mm-hmm. quite obvious to us that now there's a there's mm-hmm. between Temptation 60 and at the group currently, there is a very drastic lineup change that maybe yeah. mm-hmm. that this lineup m- might want to put some stuff down on wax, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I would love to do that. Mm-hmm. I'll say that. Okay. I would okay. love Love, love, and we would love for you to do it too. We want to see this this lineup have a new album, right? That's what we want. I do too. Okay, Let's put it in the I'm gonna say it. You know, I can say it. <laughs> that was a that was a very <laughs> diplomatic answer, Juwan. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Juwan's doing what he's supposed to do. We right, appreciate right, right, you, brother. Right. Appreciate yeah. you, man. <laughs> so, so, talk about your experiences again with attempt. What are some of the places you traveled so far with attempts? Oh, where have you uh, been? We did. We just did. Well, the recent we just did a London tour, a Europe tour. Right. Amsterdam, Netherlands, uh, mm-hmm. Germany, mm-hmm. Lindenburg. Mm-hmm. We were in Paris. We were in uh, just just about everywhere. And those are actually some of you know some of those places were my very first time ever being there. Mm-hmm. You know, so getting to explore the world in this way uh, with this group is just mm-hmm. been such an experience mm-hmm. and a memorable one. That one that I will always you know tell stories about. I get to tell my kids mm-hmm. and you know hopefully they tell them their kids mm-hmm. about this my experience but mm-hmm. we've been everywhere we've been everywhere it's interesting just getting in the group and all of a sudden you're going overseas and you're all everywhere you're going all over the place yeah right? that was that yeah. was one of the selling points for me to say yes honestly yes. <laughs> <laughs> travel and be able to go around the world you're like, you, you know right. he was like oh we're going to be going to london for you know uh to make updates for the you know the pandemic right um and i said oh you're here for a month oh Count me in. Yes. Yeah. For free. Yes. <laughs> it seems like very much like baptism by fire. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you oh, just got in through. there and getting you, mm-hmm. you got thrown into the wood. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Through and through. Mm-hmm. But it's been a fun experience. And I've been, you know, everybody has helped me along the journey. Otis always, you know, he's, he, he's baby Barry Gordy. Like he, mm-hmm. he'll, he's very much like we'll be performing. And then I remember my first, like probably two shows, Cause I, we, I dance a lot next to him. Mm-hmm. And like, if I was like misstepping, like he'll slap my hand or, <laughs> <laughs> you know, or, then, or he'll come off. He was like, all right, y'all, uh, you know, some of them harmonies are a little spooky tonight. So let's, uh, yeah. let's get on back, you know, and we will have rehearsal tomorrow so we mm-hmm. can clean up these harmonies mm-hmm. or, uh, we're going to get back in rehearsal so we can, you know, get these moves down because, mm-hmm. you know, Juwan, he was on the wrong foot today. And I was so like, oh, my bad, aunt, you know, so. Get on a good foot. <laughs> but he's very much got that, you know, Motown vibe, because Barry Gray was just like, yeah. too. Like where he, we would do a whole show, mm-hmm. you know, in Broadway, nothing changed. It's mm-hmm. supposed to change, rather. Right. But we would do a whole show and Barry Gray would be there. And instead of saying hi, the first thing you say, yeah, uh, uh, the Temptations tonight, Y'all were a little off on y'all and y'all y'all pitching and, and, and I don't like the storyline. So we're gonna change this, we're gonna change this. And we're like, well, hey to you too, Barry. What's up? Man? <laughs> <laughs> he gets right to the point, though, doesn't he? <laughs> yes, right to the point. And is that it's that Barry multi and had I not had that experience yeah. before, I probably wouldn't be able to know how to experience that, you know, right. this experience. Because right. Motown just was run. You know, the way they were run, they were ran mm-hmm. just very militant, yeah. not militant, but like, mm-hmm. we want y'all to be perfect. Mm-hmm. You, know, you have to be every time mm-hmm. there's, you know, because that's just what it is. And right. and so because I'm used to it, I expect it. I'm like, come on, bring it to me. Right. But everybody else, you know, uh, Terry and Ron and, mm-hmm. and Tony and mm-hmm. just all the fellas, it's just a camaraderie and a the love. Mm-hmm. They all they are there to help me anything I need mm-hmm. at right. any time. Um, one thing that I've observed about you and actually it really came into, uh, it was very obvious. Uh, one of the last times I saw you, you guys were performing silent night and, uh, because of who was singing lead and, and what part might've been missing in the harmony, uh, 
you actually filled in uh, a, a note above what you would usually sing. Uh, oh. You have a lot of range. Yes. Now, yeah. you, so you can sing. You can sing uh, tenor all the way down the bass. Uh, do you get to utilize that as uh, as much as you would like? I mean, uh, or are you uh, are you strictly bass all the time? And I I'm not don't. talking just the Temptations. Do you get to have uh, anything where you can sing in a higher register? Um, not often, but you know, I've told my my agents and managers, I'm like, hey, listen. If we, I don't use it, I'm going to lose it. So send me out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also in my, like, I got some new stuff coming out. I get to, um, that I'm working on and I get to like showcase that part of me. Okay. okay. Um, and, and, you know, it just keeps me fresh, you know, as an actor, as a performer, you know, I don't ever want to be just like labeled as just mm -hmm. one thing. You want to be typecast or pigeonholed. Right, right. Right. Yeah. Because to get typecast is a, a, a very real thing. Right. And so I've been working, trying to get out of that. Okay. For a while, because you know, ain't too proud to see you. They're like, "Oh, he's a bass," and mm -hmm. so we're gonna only bring him mm -hmm. in. For right. bass, lower speaking voices, mm -hmm. older guys. Mm -hmm. Even though he looks like he's twenty two, mm -hmm. like. <laughs> <laughs> now, on that same note, um, what is the lowest song? What is, it, it, what is the lowest song that you have to sing in the show currently? What uh, makes you sweat a little bit? Yes or no? Yeah, yeah, that's the okay. same. that's a new one. New no, it's the it's the lowest I have, I have to sing, and mm -hmm. I just remember I was like, yeah, I'm like, oh, does Melvin Amy sing these notes? Why do you ask? <laughs> 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 Why do you have to do? He's like, because you got it, and you can. And I'm like, okay, fair enough. Because <laughs> I was like, why? Why I'm like, you know, look at the, you know, even in some of the songs that we're singing, like Rain, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I was just like. Oh no! What? Wait! Why am I doing this? So I'm like, first of all, you can't even hear me. You have to turn me up. It's like it's gonna be there. Trust it. And so mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, but those are you know those two songs. They they get me sweating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you see, there has not been a live show yet that I've seen you on where your bass vocals have not been very clear and 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 it, it hasn't always been in uh, the case in in years past but you are you are very mm -hmm. pronounced mm -hmm. in the harmony mm -hmm. so when you when you sing it we hear you mm -hmm. and it which is a which is a really really awesome thing mm -hmm. and you said that you have some of your own music coming out uh you have some projects that you're working on uh what's going on with that what do you have uh, out right now so, well, I don't have anything right now. I'm in the studio. Uh, I've been spending my time, like my off time in the studio. Okay. okay. <laughs> so uh, I got two single, two, like a, a double single coming out that I'll hopefully be finished by, by the spring. Cause it's, I feel like it's the spring, summer beat, summer mm -hmm. song, mm -hmm. you know, like, mm -hmm. and it's like, you know, it's going to be a cover, um, a song that's, you know, very popular cover song. Okay, I can't see you know. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Well, we played a Christmas song already on you. You know the Christmas song. I appreciate the love. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. It's on the station now. So and well, uh, and Kevin White did some research. Did you work with the Wiggles recently? I did. <laughs> <laughs> now what I is that? You. I'm not familiar. What is that? Wiggles? What is that? The like the Wiggles, like the Temptation. The Wiggles are are infamous and popular, and they've been around for. Okay. Ever, yeah, right. kids group um, based in Australia. Okay, that's Australia, great. And, um, they were celebrating, I think, thirty years in the business. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and so uh, the lead wiggle, mm -hmm. Anthony, he came to see Ain't Too Proud, and when we were in Toronto doing our out of town mm -hmm. run, right, and mm -hmm. he came when we came to Broadway, and then he kind of fell in love with um, myself, James Harkness, right, because James works with uh, them a lot, uh, works with them a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, James had an actual whole um, show with them that he curated curated during the pandemic. Right, uh, nice. called the James Cafe, mm -hmm. and um, and then for the listeners and viewers who don't know, James played Paul. James Harkness Paul played Williams, Paul yeah. Williams in the mm -hmm. Angel Proud musical. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. and so then Anthony brought on Taylor and I. Was like, hey, we're doing the song with uh, you know as, as our anniversary song, our famous song, Fruit Salad. We would mm -hmm. love for you guys mm -hmm. to feature on it. And you know what's crazy is uh, when we we recorded that James, myself, and Taylor were supposed to go in the studio at the exact same time and record it. However, something ended up coming up for me. I ended up booking something, so I couldn't record it at the same time. So I went okay. to the studio and recorded separately. Oh, right. Now you know they sent the song proper, and they I guess they at first wanted us to do like backgrounds. So I was like, I'm just gonna sing the whole song and then backgrounds and add my stuff and whatever they. You know, they keep, they keep. And they end up keeping me as the lead. One of the <laughs> <things>. <laughs> I 
I was like, so I ended up leading like most of the song or, you know, right. portion of the song, which was fun. It was unexpected. And so, you know, hmm. that was that experience. And, you know, we're, we got a lot, a lot of other things just coming up with the Wiggles too. That is, I'm excited about. That's great. Well, speaking uh, of other, an other artists, what other artists do you like? Do you listen to what's on your iPod right now? What do you listen to? Uh, if other you, than, if other you still than, have an iPod, well, I, whether, 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 whether you're using that, your, your phone. Uh, you know, Gregory Porter right now, I'm really heavily on. Yes. Yes. Gregory Porter, I love his style. His baritone bass vocals, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love, I, you know, I love his instrumentation, the way musicality of, you know, the way his album is, his sound is, and, you know, mm-hmm. just in, in the studio creating my sound. I've been kind of listening to that. I've been also listening to my top favorite R&B singers are Brandy and Tank. Okay. And Joe. Oh, really? Wow. Those are my favorite three. Mm-hmm. Um, you said Brandy. Joe, was it? Joe, yeah. Okay. He's, he's good oh, wait, I got some trivia. Mm-hmm. Do you okay. know which one of those three people produced for The Temptations back in 2000? That's a good one. Ooh, I, know That's a good one. I know That's the answer. I know the answer. I know the answer. Which one of those three people's produced... I'm going to say Joe. Yes. Good that's job. It. Give yes, a round of applause. Yeah, yeah, there we go. You get the prize. You get the prize. <laughs> uh, it, it's actually the, the last song that the yes. Temptations had a music video for. I'm here. I'm here. With Joe, uh, Joe produced that track. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so that's, that's good trivia. I didn't yeah. know that. I, was, yeah. I mean, it would make sense because mm-hmm. it's sensibility, Joe's sensibility. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Sorry. Joe and the Terry Weeks sound, mm-hmm. sound are the same thing for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. T- it's funny that you say, you know, Terry Weeks. Terry Weeks has been one of my favorite voices in the Temptations uh, as well for as long as, mm-hmm. as long as I can remember. So mm-hmm. you were talking about full circle experiences before he and I had a, a similar thing when I recorded a, a project back with the Temps in 2017, where he and I did a duet together. Uh, wow. Terry was the one who got me into the touring entertainment unit when I was in the air force. So Terry's really good for stuff like that, man. Mm-hmm. Terry's such a great guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, what oh, yeah. has he been able, like is anything that you've been able to um, uh, learn or draw from him and your experiences with him on the road? Maybe similar to when, just so I can relate to you similar to something that I might have been able to do. I, I feel like I draw from Terry all the time. Terry mm-hmm. is, he's just, he's a gentle giant. Mm-hmm. You yeah. Know, that is, you know, short in stature, but like, big and presence mm-hmm. and um, just anything. Uh, I just realized like he's been in multiple groups. and has multiple like lives. <laughs> that he's right. in. Um, and, and so he just speaks to, you know, all of those things. And like, you know, he knows a, a younger version of himself and me. And so he'll speak, you know, speak encouraging words and give me advice and on, on anything I ever asked. And so he's just been that guy for me. Yeah. Well, Carl, great. you did a, 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 an album with, uh, he did a, a song well, yeah, we did Ter- a, Terry. Yeah, yeah. So uh, all I need. Yeah, yeah. Terry and I recorded a, a mm-hmm. duet together, and Otis was actually featured prominently mm-hmm. on the tail end of the mm-hmm. song. We did a, a cover of "All I Need." Mm-hmm. Um, about what five, six years ago now? Twenty seventeen. Oh, was yeah, that long yeah. ago? Yeah. Doctor yeah. Otis Williams presents Kyle Mack. Shaky Ground was the album. Kyle was on it. So if you came down here, we would have you sing a song with Kyle. You know, you guys, you all got to do a little something together. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We didn't do this interview to plug my music. Well, <laughs> just <laughs> hey, <laughs> but uh, it's all the same thing, right? It's all the same. It's all thing. connected. It's, easy opportunity. it's all. It's all yeah. connected. You know. Yeah. Yep. But man, we appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule today and um, sharing this history with us and being part of the show and letting us know what you're doing, man. Absolutely. I appreciate y'all for having me. It's fun. Now, how long are you? Are you off a little while and you go back on the road soon? Or? I am here for two more days and then we're okay. doing uh, Grammy week. Okay. Uh, oh, oh, what's oh, Grammy oh, week? Nice. So, you know, the Grammys are next week. And so right. uh, because of that, we, it's a lot of events surrounding it. So we're doing, we're performing actually for mu- the Music Cares event that is honoring Smokey Robinson. And, oh, uh, awesome. Very, doing that, but very the Four nice. Tops are doing that too, yeah. The Four Tops are doing it, Layla Hathaway, John Legend, a whole mm-hmm. bunch of folks. What a blessing know. to still have Barry Gordy with us though. You know, it's, Absolutely. It's, it's, Absolutely. You know, the man that started he Motown, and he's just left this legacy to for generations of people to enjoy, mm-hmm. you know, to continue to enjoy, but. Uh, I think the secret is being vegan because no. that man. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, Kevin, 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 Kevin's Kevin has his hands up in there because he's a vegan too. That's and, right. And I've been making fun I of tried him. it. I tried it. I'm a, I'm a baby vegan. Mm. I, can't, <laughs> I got to go back to the meat sometimes. Not about me, I got to have my steak and potatoes, brother. Right. I'm telling you. <laughs> I love my pot rolls. I'm sorry. Kevin. <laughs> okay. I'm with you, brother. I'm with you on uh, that. So uh, Tim mentioned uh, the four tops. Now, mm. when you join the Temptations, you know that there are a lot of double bills with the four tops on the tour. Now, did you walk into the friendly rivalry like what is the dynamic between <laughs> what have you observed between the dynamic between the temptation and the tops when it comes to opening and closing and you know you no know, i've learned you know i've learned earlier on like i just be before i actually was like in the like i was just coming around and uh 
it's just it's it's, it's very playful. Loki mm-hmm. is he's the one that talks to the, he keeps the rival going. Right, like, right, right, right. right. He's the one that'll go in and talk like, oh, here Tim coming, here Tim come. All <laughs> right, <laughs> y'all, y'all, everybody go. The top, you know, you need a top in order. Like he'll he'll do the play on word thing. Like yeah. mm-hmm. he, he's that, but you know, it's it's all love though. At the end mm-hmm. of the day, it's all love. Mm-hmm. And um, I love it. And I remember when I first joined, when they first heard me actually sing, because you know, when you come in a group and you knew the new man on the block, everybody is like side eye, like, mm-hmm. do we got we react is he actually a bass? Like, can he do what he right? And mm-hmm. I just remember um getting the word back, it was just like, and I'm not gonna say the word, but it's like this MF can blow. <laughs> like, <laughs> right, right, right. right. <laughs> like, uh oh, we gonna have to we gonna have to pull up like this uh-huh. lineup now. Like I'm we nervous, you know. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. Um, it, that's just, it's all friendly competition and love, mm-hmm. you know, and they, they're all cool. When I interviewed Richard Street from The Temptations, he has been on the show multiple times, you know, prior to his passing, but uh, God bless his soul. But Richard Street said the same thing, it's all love. And, you know, mm-hmm. talk about being with Motown and, and the battle of the groups and the four tops and the, and, uh, the four tops of Richard Street's favorite group. So, you know, yeah, they're trying to get us to, um, everybody's, all the promoters are trying to get us to do the, uh, the, the battle. Mm-hmm. Oh, I would yeah. love to see that the again, battle zone the groups and they haven't done it in how many years well it? the last time I saw them yeah. do it was when they were on Broadway mm-hmm. which would have been about 20 14 14 was that Bruce was Bruce in there Bruce was in yeah. there at that time Bruce, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah they're um, we, I mean this I guess this year they're trying like, it's 30 what 30 some years that they've been touring together the Tents of the yeah. Tops mm-hmm. yeah. right it's the 80s, 80s yeah um, and so you know who's to say that you know, they may put it in in mm-hmm. a show or stop. Well, it thing. makes sense because mm-hmm. if you think about it, the the uh, famous Thames and Tops battle that broadcast on Motown 25 mm-hmm. was what, 1983? Mm-hmm. It's yeah. 2023. Yes. So uh, the, the math adds up. It's an anniversary year. Yeah, oh, yes. yeah it's an anniversary year. And they were, talk- we were, they were talking about it when we were in um, Germany. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was actually for Otis's birthday. We were offered uh, at dinner and... You know, they was like, well, we might build, you know, this next tour as, you know, the anniversary of the Temps and the Tops tour together. That'd so great. Yeah. we'll see I, what comes out of that. You know, and we know we got some new music in the lineup for tour, the, this tour coming up. So I'm oh, excited about that, you know, releasing great. that to kind of make it fresh and, you know, shake things up a little bit. Yeah, I actually one time had a conversation with Billy Bannister. Right. Mm-hmm. And he said he, this was him. I, I don't have verifiable proof of this, but he said he thinks that the Temps Tops tour is the longest running continuous mm-hmm. tour in show wow. business history. Mm-hmm. It can and be very, very well possible. It's, it's got to be the cool. group. Yeah. <laughs> it's not out there. None. Yeah. So you mentioned yeah. some new songs. You know, are you going to go deeper into the catalog? Of the Temptations? Is that for, yeah, they're going to go. I guess they're going to go deeper and then kind of like change out some things that, you know, Maybe, um, maybe they'll have you do. I truly, truly believe uh, that the uh, Melvin lead. You know, I want, I want all the Melvin leads. <laughs> 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 they, they try, you know, the, was like, we're going to have you do old man river for this, you know, one of these. And I'm like, uh-huh. uh, this well, that's a show tune. You don't be able to do that. Right. That's a show tune, uh, brother. That's a show tune. Yeah, show tune but, show you know, for me, for me, it's just trying to bring it justice and trying to make sure I do it right. Mm-hmm. Because everybody, again, mm-hmm. I'm walking in with side eyes. Like, uh-huh. right. Mm-hmm. Let me see what you got. Yeah, yeah, listen, right. you did your thing on side of night though. You did side of night. You kicked yeah. it. It's yeah. always that comparison. Mm-hmm. So, you know, so like, but like I, we said, I, I, you bring your, bring, you bring yourself into it, into the role. So, so oh, yeah, it'll uh, definitely be me. That's, through. you know, <laughs> that's a great thing, man. I wish you much success with it, with the temptations. I look forward to seeing you on the road man. soon. Thanks, and next time you come to the area, I think they're coming to our area pretty soon. So, I'm not I'm not aware that so, Kevin's usually got I think the February February the area. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right. Yep. Cool. Right. I don't think we come that way in February. Well, really. for or me, the area is anywhere from mm-hmm. between about Connecticut and Virginia. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Sure. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm like, oh, I'll, yeah. be, I'll be the South Jersey, New York, New York shows yeah, in Philadelphia. We, yeah, our, 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 Kevin's uh, all over the place. <laughs> you know, Kevin, Kevin and I are driving range for yes. Temptations concerts about like three or four hours. So. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll be there to support you. Though. I want to thank you for being part of the show here. Let's give a round of applause to Jawan Jackson yeah. of the Temptations. Thanks, friend. Congratulations, brother. And I want to thank our special co-host here, Mr. Kevin White. And, of course, Mr. Kyle Mack. It's awesome to be here with you all today. All right. I'm Tim Marshall. Thank you for joining us for R&B Showcase.